Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Andy here with you with Abundant Life Church, where life change becomes reality. I am so glad that you are with me this morning on this Faith Friday. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So we have been speaking on faith. We've been talking about faith and fear, how we are not to be moved by fear, we are not to make decisions based on fear, but we're to make them in faith. Glory be to God. And how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing the word and hearing the word of God. So I am so glad that you are with me this morning. And what we have been going over this week has been over uh, uh, the, 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 the children of Israel going towards the promised land. And Moses sends out 12 spies. Ten come back with a bad report. They're moved by fear. And two come back with a good report and they're moved by faith. And the ones that are moved by fear begin to complain. And they begin to, to, to complain against God and complain against Moses and Aaron, the leaders. And they even go to the point of sitting around saying that we're going to make a leader for us to take us back to Egypt. <laughs> uh, and I, I, at that point in time, that's when I was reminded, I said, boy, this sounds like a church split. But I'm telling you right now, God showed up in the midst of the situation and God proved himself mighty and strong in the whole entire situation. And so uh, uh, we have now made it to a place in Numbers chapter uh, 14 where God is talking to the children of Israel and he's letting them know, uh, Moses, you go and tell the children of Israel that these are the things that are going to happen. And we learned yesterday that those that was moved by fear would not enter the promised land, that they're not able to go in. You cannot enter the promised land except by faith. And what we've been talking about is how fear is robbing so many Christians of what God has promised them. Mm, my goodness, I'm telling you right now, it's getting thick in here already. How fear is robbing Christians of what God has promised them. This, this was the children, this is the children of Israel. This, these are God's people. And God has already performed mighty miracles on their behalf. And here they are. And God has promised them even more. Remember when we was talking Wednesday, I said they're literally standing there with gold gold hanging all off of them. They got gold rings and, and gold necklaces and silver. And, and they got the finest clothes and there's not a sick person among them. So here they are. And the whole time, fear has convinced them that they're the victim. <laughs> oh, it's priceless. And, and, but, but faith is sitting around saying, hold on, God's not done. He's even better than that. Let me show you the promise of God and let's move forward in him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm so glad that you're back with me this morning and we're gonna jump right back into the word of God. Now, here we are in Numbers chapter 14 and we're going to start with verse 30. So we're in Numbers chapter 14, gonna start with verse 30. Except for Caleb, the son of Janiah, and Joshua, the son of Nun, you shall by no means enter the land which I swore I would make you dwell in, nor your little ones whom you said would be victims. I shall bring them in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. But as for you, as for your carcasses, they'll fall into wilderness." And your sons shall be shepherds in the wilderness 40 years and bear the brunt of your infidelity until your carcasses are consumed in the wilderness. So who, who bore the brunt? Their children. Who bore the brunt of their fear? Their children. Who bore the brunt of their fear? Their children. Who bore the brunt of their fear? Their children. Listen to me. You may not enter the promised land because of fear, but who will bear the brunt of it? Who will take the hardest lick of it will be your children. 
Oh, my Lord. You know, there's been times that I have uh, in this ministry, especially here lately, I have, um, when I say here lately, I'd say over the past five years, that I've seen men and women of God that, that God had done so many things for and so many things through. And all of a sudden, they begin to move in fear and not in faith. And can I tell you, can I, can I tell you, their children have bore the brunt of it. I can't even go into it right now, but I am telling you, I've seen it time and time again. Their children bear the brunt of it. Mm. Who bore it? Their children bore the brunt. So come on, let's move forward. Verse 34, according to the number of days which you spied out the land, 40 days, for each day you shall bear your guilt one year, namely 40 years, and you shall know my rejection. I, the Lord, have spoken this. I will surely do this to all this evil congregation who gathered together against me in the wilderness. They shall be consumed and there they shall die. Now the men who Moses sent to spy out the land, who returned and made all the congregation complain against him by bringing a bad report of the land, those very men who brought the evil report about the land died by the plague before the Lord. So here they are. The, you, you, got the, you got the 12 spies you got Moses, Aaron, and you have the 12 spies, and, and here they are. And the ones that brought the evil report, what happened to them? Not only did they not enter the promised land, but because they um, encouraged the people to complain against Moses and Aaron and to complain against the Lord, right there, right then, the plague killed them, right there in front of all of them. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of John and I, remained alive of the men who went to spy out the land. Then Moses told these words to all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. And they rose early in the morning and went up to the top of the mountain, saying, Here we are, and we will go up to the place which the Lord has promised, for we have sinned. And Moses said, now why do you transgress and command the, the command of the Lord? For this will not succeed. Do not go up lest you be defeated by your enemies. For the Lord is not among you. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you and you shall fall by the sword. Because you have turned away from the Lord. The Lord will not be with you. But they presume to go up to the mountaintop. Nevertheless, neither the ark nor the covenant, the ark of the covenant, nor the Lord, nor Moses departed from the camp. The Amalekites and the Canaanites who dwell in the mountain came down and attacked them and drove them as far as Harmar. So here it is. They they turn around and and they begin to to mourn because these 10 have died. So they mourn. And then they wake up the next morning. And they say, well, we're going on up to the mountain and we're going to take the land. And Moses says, what are you talking about? Take the land. God has already said that you can't have it now. There was a moment. There was a moment that you could have had it by faith. But now that moment's gone. Now rejection has come. Now that has been taken away. Now that moment's gone. And they ignored the man of God. They head on up. And what happens? Exactly what he said. God's not with you. You're going to die by the sword if, you're, if, if you go up there. And sure enough, exactly what fear had told them. What happened is exactly what happened. Remember, fear had told them in the beginning that they could not take the land. 
See, they was not able to take the land because of who they were. They were not able to take the land because because uh, they had the might, the 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 uh, natural ability. The reason they was able to take the land was by faith in God. It was by faith in God that they were able to take the land. Here they are. Once again, they removed their faith away from God and they say, well, we're going on up and taking the land. And they go up and they're killed. And so many times I've seen this happen. I can't even, I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've watched people as God gave them a promise. God gave them a promise. And 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 so they were, they were um in the beginning, they were by faith going after the promise. And then in the midst of the process, somewhere in the process, they turned around and and began to rely on their own. Uh, knowledge. They begin to rely on their own ability. They begin to rely on their connections and, and their ability to network and, and all these things, thinking that they was going to inhabit the land by what they can do. But they can't inhabit the land by what they can do. It's by faith in God. By faith in God, the promise was given. By faith in God, they could obtain the promise. And by faith in God, they could dwell in the promise. But without faith in God, they will be absolutely annihilated. And so here we are, you know, when you take this and you apply this to our lives in 2018, we are no different. So many times God's performed mighty miracles on our behalf. And and, and I've seen this time and time again, uh, people are saved and and they've been saved for six months to a year. And that whole six months and that whole year long, God is performing miracle after miracle after miracle on their behalf. <laughs> Blessed be the Lord. And the, he's performing these miracles on their behalf. And then all of a sudden, just all of a sudden, they're moved by fear and something. And you, and you see them begin to try to work something out with their own mind. They're, they're trying to work it out with what they can do, what they can accomplish, what they can muster up. And they go out there and they're absolutely annihilated. And I'm looking at it saying, God wasn't with you. And they're saying, yeah, but that was the promise. By faith, you can have the promise. By faith, you can have the promise, but not without faith. Without faith, you can't have the promise. You can't dwell in the promised land without faith. And and so here it is. Let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 11 right quick. Grab your Bible. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Because while we're talking about the promise, while we're talking about faith, let's look at this and let's see how faith operates in this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. This is such a wonderful word. Hebrews chapter 11. I hope that you're there. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Okay? For it, for by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith, we understand that worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Okay, so now let's take this and let's apply this to the promise in the promised land. By faith, we understand that the promised land was made. It was framed and could be obtained for the elders because faith was the substance. Faith was the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What was the evidence that, jo that Joshua and Caleb could go into the promised land? What made it where they could go in? It was the substance. It was faith 
that turned around and gave them the substance where they could go into the promised land. It was faith that made it where they could enter into the promised land. It was the evidence that they could go in. Oh, hallelujah. I hope that you're grabbing this. Faith was the substance and the evidence for Joshua and Caleb. By it, the elders obtained a good testimony. Now, if I asked you about your testimony, you would tell me your life story. By it, Josh and Ca Joshua and Caleb obtained a good testimony. What's their testimony? That when everybody else doubted and everybody else was full of fear, Joshua and Caleb did not doubt and they were not full of fear and they entered into the promised land. Could everybody enter? They all could have entered by faith, but they all did not enter. But here it is, Joshua and Caleb get to enter in. Why? Because the substance... And the evidence was faith. You can, you can see it all through Caleb. You can see it all through Joshua. It turns around and says, we're well able. We can do this. God has given this to us. We can have this. And other people turned around and said, we'll stone them for saying such a thing. <laughs> but it didn't change nothing. Because by faith, they could have it. By faith, they could have it. Hallelujah. By faith, their world was framed so that the things, the things which are seen for them was made by the things which were not seen. Hallelujah. So here we are and, and we can see that Joshua and Caleb entered into the promised land by faith. And so here, here we are in our situation, in our circumstance. And I don't care what's coming. You have to realize the entire nation of Israel had begun to disagree, except for Moses and Aaron, had begun to disagree with Joshua and Caleb. But it did not change anything. Every one of them of that age group died in the wilderness except two. And it was the two that obtained it by faith. Now, <laughs> here we are on Faith Friday. Hallelujah. What is it that God has promised you? What is it that you're after? What is it that, you, that you're sitting around saying, God, I know that you, you, you have this for me. And whatever it is, by faith, you can have it. By faith, you can can have it. It is the substance that it's made of is your faith. It's the substance that it's made of. Your world will be framed as you believe this, as you believe in God to perform a miracle on your behalf. Your very world will begin to change. Everything around you will begin to happen and begin to take place for you to enter into the promised land that he has promised you. Bless the Lord. And your generations will be blessed. Hallelujah. It's a generation breaking moment. I love it. I love it. I love it. By faith, not by fear, but by faith. God is doing this on your behalf. He's changing everything on your behalf. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just thank him for a minute. Lord, we thank you. We praise you, oh God, for this word. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us. And Lord God, giving us revelation into your word. We thank you, oh God, that Lord Master, as you have shown us these things, Lord God, our promises are yes and amen that you have given us, oh God. So let me pray for you. Lord, today I pray. I pray for everybody that's watching, everybody that's listening, oh God. And I ask, oh God, that as they reach out by faith, oh God, may, may, may they begin to see everything change, oh God. It's Faith Friday. Lord, my faith is high. I know that their faith is high, oh God. And right now, Lord Master, I, I, I link up with my brothers and my sisters 
And I say, oh God, because your word says that all the promises are yes and amen to those who believe. Hallelujah. And Lord God, we can have exactly what we have asked for by faith in you, oh God. I thank you for this, Lord Master. I bless them. I pray over them. I bless their families. Lord God, I bless their homes. Lord Master, as they, as they dive into your word more and more, I ask, Holy Spirit, that you teach them all things for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, guys, uh, I am so thankful that you was with us today on this Faith Friday, and I can't wait to see you Sunday morning. Don't forget, uh, our service times are at 9 and 11, Sunday morning in Locust Grove and in, for, in Forsyth. This is Abundant Life Church, where life change becomes reality. Thank you for tuning in to the Abundant Life devotional series. These devotions are available across many platforms, including our Abundant Life Revival Network YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at WeAreALRC for this and other great content. If you are in the South Atlanta area or the North Macon and Forsyth areas, we would love for you to come visit one of our campuses. You can find all the information you need at AbundantLifeChurch.com. My name is Jennifer, I am Overflow, and I am Abundant Life Church.